Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Christelle Martinet. And um, as promised, I have come with a uh, conversation with uh, um, Arushi Tool, Talwar's uh, soul. Why did I have to cancel last weekend's session? Um, it was Thursday and Friday when I was gathering all of the questions from you and that you had listed for me that I, I had this troubled energy and she kept coming and screaming and screaming and crying. I was dreaming blood at night and I was dreaming tears at night. And the message was, I had to uh, uh, directly ask, she uh, was still earthbound. Now, what happens? Earthbound souls remain earthbound before they pass when something very traumatic occurs and uh, or when they are so linked to their possessions or family in a very obsessive way. And in this case, it was a trauma. It was trauma, um, her traumatic death, really. And so I um, I ritualized her passing and it took a few days. And so I thought, let me let me wait till the next weekend. And here I am. To be able to do this, to, to have this conversation, what I would like to do is first to welcome in the air for all of us before we start and clear the air. talk a bit about her and um, go over this, the exact steps of what we know. This is public knowledge. You'll find this anywhere. For those of you who are joining me who haven't been to my channel ever or who are not culturally aware of uh, the, her particular passing and how it happened. Um, Arushi Talwar was 13 when she died and she was found uh, with a slit throat dead in Noida, India, where she lived on May 16th, 2008, in her parents' home. Her parents are Rajesh and Nupur Talwar. Initially, the prime suspect was 45-year-old Hemraj Binjade, but he was found dead one day after. Now, we also know that the crime scene had not been secured. The media and the public went to the scene and Talwar, Talwar's parents soon became prime suspects. Arushi Talwar was born on May 24th, 1994, to two dentists and was a student at the Delhi Public School. And like I said, she lived in Noida's Sector 25 with her parents at the time of her death. Doctors Rajesh and Nupur Talwar practiced, meanwhile, at a clinic in Sector 27 of Noida, as well as at Fortis Hospital, where Rajesh Talwar headed the dental department there. Anita and Praful Durani were close friends with the Talwars, and they shared the Noida clinic with the couple. At 6.01 a.m., on the morning of May 16th, the doorbell rang to their home. And housemaid Barty was usually let in by Benjade, but he was strangely missing. She rang the bell three more times and was finally greeted by Nupur, who was on the balcony. And this was odd, she thought. It's uh, very unusual because Arushi Talwar's parents were known to sleep in late because they worked in the evening shifts, usually at the clinic. Benjade was the one who usually took care of letting servants and guests in. The gate at the entrance was locked from the outside, so Nupur had to throw Bardi a set of keys. And when the maid walked into the home, she noticed that 
Arushi's father, Rajesh, was awake too. Both parents were in their daughter's room crying. Look what Hamraj has done, they were crying and yelling. And it was then that Bharti saw Arushi Talwar motionless in a puddle of blood. Her throat was slit by what is called a kukri knife, a small sharp knife with a certain curvature. She rushed to get the neighbors and some medical assistance, but of course, it was already far too late for the girl. When the police arrived at 7.15 a.m., there was a crowd of 15 people at the towel wards that had already been let in and had gone into the living room while five or six others were in the Talwar's master bedroom. In terms of crime scene tampering, having dozens of people taint the integrity of DNA evidence and move things around was unusual and really egregious. Now, most of the 25 fingerprint samples that the police lifted from the scene, from the crime scene, were smudged and truly useful. Sorry, truly useless if they were smudged. They were useless. But oddly enough, and this is our first feeling of something odd going on, Rajesh, Arushi's father, told the police not to open the locked terrace door and offered them 25,000 rupees, which is roughly $350, to track Benjadi down. The narrative that it was the live-in servant, Benjadi, took root almost immediately. The Central Bureau of Investigation, the CBI that we hear uh, uh, talk of, later mentioned how actively the Talwars were in pushing this story that Benjade was guilty. Then Rajesh and Nupur, Arushi's parents, also claimed that they had not heard a single sound while the murders had taken place. They said that their closed door and air conditioning unit blocked out the sounds of bludgeoning and laceration. A blood-stained kukri knife, as I mentioned, was found in the home of Krishna Tadarai, an assistant of the Talwars. He was released by the CBI after a court found the Bureau had used excessive interrogation techniques. The night Arushi Talwar was murdered, her friend Anmal called the Talwar's landline. It was around midnight and Amnal couldn't get through to his friend's cell phone. Arushi Talwar typically stayed up after midnight talking to her friends and otherwise using her phone. On May 15th, however, her phone was not active after 9.10 p.m. These are the facts as were reported. Ann Mall's call to the house was left unanswered, so he sent a text message at around 12.30 a.m. after midnight. The message was never received by Arushi's phone because it had already been shut off. It would later be found on a dirt track near Noida's Sedapur area, Sedarpur area by a maid and the memory of the phone had been completely wiped clean. The CBI closure report found that the Talwars got home from work at 9.30 p.m. the night of their daughter's death. They apparently had dinner with her and gave her a new digital camera as an early birthday present. And after taking a few photos together, the family retired at 11 p.m., at which time they later said they saw their daughter reading a book. The press was all over the Talwar case, particularly the day the guilty verdict was handed down. The couple was charged with murder, destruction of evidence, and common intent. 
it's important to note here that Arushi's bedroom door was usually locked at, mid at bedtime. And the keys were usually left on Nupur, her mother, Nupur's night table. But the mother later told the police she couldn't remember whether she had locked her daughter's door that night or not. And the story here starts to get confusing. Now, Rajesh, her father, meanwhile, was on the internet to catch up on emails the night of his daughter's murder. murder and the fluctuating state of his stock investments. He sent his last email on at 11.57 p.m. after receiving a call on the landline. He then went to bed, as far as anyone knows, although the last internet usage was clocked in just after midnight. Now, both Arushi and Benja, they are believed to have been killed between midnight and 1 a.m., one day apart from each other. Arushi was killed first and Benjadi the following day. It was discovered that Arushi's internet router was turned off at 3.43 a.m., which suggested that whoever walked into her bedroom to turn it off either didn't notice a blood-soaked bed with a dead girl lying in it or was responsible for her death. The next day, keys to the apartment and the terrace were reportedly found by Nupur on Benjade's bed. The key to Arushi's bedroom were in the living room. There were There was no other set of house keys, even though the property's gate was locked from the outside. Clearly, somebody else had a separate set. But who? When doctors came to visit the Talwar resident to ch residents to check up on uh, the distraught parents, they noticed blood stains on the handle of the terrace door, which was still locked. They also noticed smudged, bloody, footmarks on the floor and bloodstains on the staircase. Rajesh was asked for the terrace keys, but he didn't produce them and instead went inside after he noticed the blood on the door handle. He remained inside for, the enti for an entire day with police unable to access the terrace. Now, very odd, very odd facts that are reported. Benjade's body was discovered the following day, as I said, on May 17th. The telephone loop from the day before was coincidentally repeated between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. That morning, he was discovered. Deputy Superintendent of Police K.K. Gautam called journalists, he knew, uh, to arrive at the house before the terrace gate was opened. Now, on May 17th, the police broke the terrace lock open as the keys were still missing and found Benjadi's decomposing body. There was evidence that both dead bodies were moved around the apartment. The new narrative was that Benjadi had been dragged to this terrace in a bedsheet and the terrace door was then locked and the killers then re-entered the house and drank whiskey. The liquor cabinet was fairly well hidden behind a wooden panel. Uh, a bottle of whiskey was found on the kitchen table with blood stains of both victims on it. The police, however, and this is interesting, the police, however, failed to collect proper samples from the bottle. The crime scene also appeared to be dressed up and scrubbed of any evidence that would point to the Talwars. The Talwars told their servants to clean the floor and walls of her room, Arushi's room, with soap and water. Her bloody mad mattress was tossed out onto the terrace of a neighbor. Meanwhile, phone records show 
that between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. on May 16th, Rajesh's older brother Dinesh, his family friend Sushil Chaudhuri, Chaudhuri, the retired deputy superintendent of police, Gautam, and someone at an, an unidentified number all began to communicate while the autopsy report was being re- written. And Dinesh called Chaudhuri, Chodber- who then called Gautam. Gautam called the unidentified number. This would then repeat, but in reversed orders, six entire times. The CBI, the Central Bureau of Investigation, later said that these communications may have been attempts by the family to use their connection to Gotham to erase references to rape from the autopsy report. So there is a theory here that arises, emerges. The theory goes that Rajesh, her father, may have caught his daughter having sex, perhaps consensual sex, perhaps non-consensual sex with Benjade, and killed them both in a fit of rage. And so he wanted uh, uh, any references to intercourse out of the report, of course. At this point, with Benjade discovered dead, the Talwars obviously became prime suspects. They knew where the liquor cabinet was, They had keys to the house, and they were in the house when the murders took place. Rajesh was arrested by police on May 23rd. There were a number of initial theories. One expert who first inspected the crime scene said that the killings were done by someone very close to Arushi. Evidence that she'd had sex and that her vagina had been penetrated and subsequently cleaned by someone was also present, but there was no semen found. As the phone calls um, mentioned may have suggested, the police suspected Rajesh Talwar found his live-in servant and young daughter engaged in sexual activity and murdered his daughter and as an honor killing, just as an honor killing, and then Benjadi for raping her. Another theory was that Rajesh himself had been engaged in extramarital relations and was confronted by his daughter and blackmailed by Banjade. Gets wild. These allegations weren't taken lightly by the Talwar family. They claimed the police were trying to frame them as the killers in order to cover up how badly they'd handled the investigation before turning it over to the CBI. The CBI actually exonerated the two parents at first. Their new suspects became the Talwar's assistant, Krishna Tadarai, and two servants, Raj Kumar and Vijay Mandal. What seemed clear to the CBI from the outset was that this was an inside job. Whoever killed Arushi and Bajade had access to the home as there were no signs of forced entry and the property's gate was locked from the outside. The CBA's interrogation of three new suspects led them to believe that Arushi was killed after a failed sexual assault and Bajade fell victim to those responsible for the act. Because of the unethical interrogations conducted to arrive at that point, however, all three were released after no concrete evidence was found. Now, what confused everyone, though, was why the killer would leave Banjade rotting on the terrace, particularly if those responsible lived there. One theory the CBI posited was that the body was hidden there in order to dispose of it after the investigation of Arushi's crime scene had been completely done, finished. And with so much media media attention and persons moving in through the home, however, that was no longer an option. Though there wasn't just enough evidence, it just wasn't enough, the evidence wasn't enough because the crime scene had been so extraordinarily tampered with, the CBI also then began to suspect that Arushi's parents were involved, indeed. 
in 2018. However, the CBI handed its investigation over to another team that recommended closing the case, closing that book. Nonetheless, it named Rajesh as the only credible suspect, her father, even while refusing to charge him since the actual proof was non-existent. The Talwar family opposed this accusation to no avail, and the Bureau reopened the investigation in 2011 and designated Rajesh and Nupur as the primary suspects. When the CBI changed its status, status of the closure report to a charged sheet to a charge sheet in February 2011, the Talwars petitioned this at the Allahabad High Court and the Supreme Court, but failed. They were now going to trial for their daughter's death. Trial, the trial began on May 11, 2013, and concluded with a guilty verdict for both defendants on November 25, 2013. 2013. Now, according to NDTV, the prosecution posited the following explanation for Arushi Talwar, the murder of Arushi Talmor. On the night of the murders, Rajesh heard a noise and assumed it had come from Banjade's room. He didn't find anyone there and picked up the golf club from Banjade's room before entering Arushi's room. There, he saw the pair engaged in sexual activity. Rajesh hit the 45-year-old servant over the head with his golf club. When he tried to hit him again, Benjade moved, leading the father to accidentally strike his own daughter instead. By the time Nupur was awakened by the noise and rushed into the room, both Banjade and Arushi were near death. Special Prosecutor Cole said, the injured Hemraj, Banjade, had fallen from the bed. Both checked Arushi's pulse and found her near dead, which scared them, and they decided to kill Hemraj so no one could discover the incident. The married couple realized they had, they'd have to fabricate a scenario in order to get away with the double murder of their daughter and their servant. So they wrapped Manjade's body and took him to the terrace to hide the body. They slit his throat and decided to do, do the same thing to their daughter. They also cleaned her vi- vagina now, Rajesh and Nupur then cleaned the entire scene. The blood stays on the floor, any stained clothing, whatever they could see that was tainted by the violent act was mopped up and disposed of. Then the couple left the house, locked the gates from the outside, and entered the residence from Banjade's room to fool the authorities. That's when the father sat down and drank some whiskey. So that is the last theory and the last sentence. In November 2013, after years of trials and legal proceedings, Rajesh and Nupur Talwar were sentenced to life in prison. The decision was heavily critiqued for being founded on circumstantial and unconvincing evidence and the Talwars even took their appeal to the Allahabad court, as I mentioned, the high court. According to the newspaper India Today, the Allahabad High Court overturned the CBI's court judgment in 2017 due to a lack of direct evidence. There were no eyewitnesses, said the judges. The CBI had also failed to provide a strong motive in their opinion. And the judges also noted that the Supreme Court established that if there's no direct evidence, reasonable doubt should override suspicion. It took four years, but the parents did manage to get acquitted on October 12th, 2017, and have remained free ever since then. 
The case remains legally unsolved, and the family points fingers at the CBI, the local police, and the media for ruining an investigation that should have resulted in their daughter's murderer being identified. The CBI was not content with this decision. Former CBI director A.P. Singh particularly felt his bureau had been dealing with a highly manipulated environment and scarce opportunities for evidence. Singh said, the only weakness we found with the investigation, their investigation, was that the scene of the crime had been badly tampered with on the first day itself. As a result, after that, we got nothing of value, he said, from the scene of the crime. That was the major gap in the entire investigation. So it was Singh himself who stated in court that although they lacked enough evidence, the CBI believed the parents were involved. When he wanted to close the case, the, course didn't allow, the court didn't allow it and instead ordered the Talwars to stand trial on charges of murder. And more than a decade after the bodies of Arushi Talwar and Hemraj Banjade were found in a double murder that stunned Noida, India and the entire country, Various media, media outlets have produced in-depth research into the case, but so far, nothing tangible has emerged. I hope our conversation today with Arushi will bring to light some answers for us. So let's now listen because I'm, I want her to tell her story. Let me see what is coming up. She's here, she's crying, crying, but it's not as terrible as it was a week ago. Tell everyone that hallelujah, I am in the light. And also tell them, yes, I was raped repeatedly by him Jade and three other men. Think of this. Think of one girl and four men who knew each other. Can you understand that there is jealousy involved? Can you understand that I was put in a difficult situation? I was not threatened. No, I was a child. Did I enjoy the attention? No, not at all. I was fearful, but not for my life. I was fearful that they might hurt me. I was fearful that they would tell my parents if I didn't please them. It hurt. It hurt a lot. I told no one, not my friends, none of them and not my parents. It is unfortunate that my parents were involved in an accusation that was wrong, but they have many faults. They knew. They understood what was happening to me. They believed that I may have been sexually abused, but had no proof. They tried 
to trick the men and it never worked. They never found any evidence. They never saw them in the act. I had a good life. I was happy. But then everything changed. How and when did it start? I can say it seemed that it went on for such a long time. Months. Seven. Six months. Six months. Stop. 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 She's crying. She's crying. She's crying. She's shouting. V, V J, V J, V J is the one. He is the one who killed both of us. The other two men were witnesses and they are also to blame. They were present. It was not torture, no. The death was immediate for me and Hemraj Hemjade Benraj Hemjade was tortured, was taken and tortured and brought back to the home hidden. My parents' guilt was that they found his body early. They never admitted to it, but they had, and they knew what had happened to me and cleaned everything. So it would not show I had been sexually abused. Everyone asks if you are at peace when you die. I have this experience now and yes, peace has come. But the pain I felt earthbound was so excruciating for me. No one could hear me. No one was able to help me, not even my old friends. Hmm. Wow. I'm going to take just a little break and have some, uh, something to drink. What a story. What a story. I have to go back and listen to this. I hope it wasn't too gruesome for you to listen to all of this, the whole story. 
but it seems that this is a story that was so muddled. Let me just tune in. She's talking about a girl. She's talking about a friend, a female friend, a girl who she tried to confide in, but she did not want to give her the responsibility. I couldn't tell her because then that would have been burden, a burden for her. And she would have had the responsibility as the expression says, the burden of proof. And I was killed with no communication and no proof. Why did my parents clean everything? This is for my sake and my honor. They thought this was important. It is a difficult story even to believe, but I hope this story will help other girls who experience this kind of assault so that they might find courage to speak out and never have fear again. I do not want to speak about men and women and the difference of men and women. I am not saying men are bad and women are good. I am here just to tell you what happened. In my case, it was a man and I was a victim, but I was a victim of sexual assault by more than one man and I was a child. I was not asked ever, ever, ever to become part of any children's sex ring, never. This you can say could be a crime of passion even though I was only 13. Go and remember the beautiful parts of this story that I have passed and now I am in peace. If anyone knows my parents, Tell them I am at peace. This is only what I ask. Goodbye. Wow. 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 Um, this is uh, quite a, a moving, very, very moving story. And um, I had she come in let me ask if there are any more things she would like to share with us and no she's saying no she doesn't want to share anything if she would like to return sometime in the future yes she would be willing to return will you give me a sign and when that should be. Yes. Okay. 
Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your support and being here. I appreciate your support and your support of my channel. Um, if you're interested in knowing what I do, you can check in the description below the video. You'll find my website, my services. I usually have it written on the screen, but today I didn't have it. Um, I, I wish that um, we could find all of us find peace but you know there's something about a child being um being uh, to being uh, preyed upon that makes it so difficult for uh, a mother you know or or a woman in general or ev anyone a parent can um can come to grips with that you know but these happened everything so many people have these experiences part of life really so just as death is part of life and we embrace that and i'm here to help that phase the crossing over and getting those message so we can learn to understand more namaste ladies and gentlemen it was a pleasure bye bye i'll be back soon namaste again <laughs>